guys and welcome back to another episode of rebuilding Wimbledon um, if you have been enjoying the series so far please do drop a like on the video that would be fantastic if we could get to 400 that would be even better um so yeah enjoy some highlights of the games that we've played so far this month um yeah it, it's been an interesting month let's put it that way but we've got some stuff to talk about in a sec so I'll join you guys for that and we can explain more in a minute Goes back for Reeves. It's not bad. Taylor's into space. He must be offside. He must be offside, but apparently he's not. Dagenham and Redbridge nil. Wimbledon won. Lyle Taylor's got four in two now. We're actually onto the top of the league, amazingly. Put the first foot into the next division. Loveridge is across. It's 2 0. We've only had two shots and we've scored both of them. Incredible stuff. And that'll push us five points clear of Dagenham with three matches to go. Loveridge. Oh, slips it through for Taylor again. And it's blocked and it's all oh, very nearly over the line. And it's put in anyway by Loveridge. And it is now 3 0 to Wimbledon away at one of our massive rivals. What a performance this has been from our strike force today. It's through for Hemmings. It's a bit deep, but he's managed to find the back post. And that is an easy goal for Billing. And Dagenham are back in the game there through Philip Billing. Is there going to be a massive comeback on the card? Billing. Grant's header. And that is now 4-2. Dagenham are back in it again, sort of. Jorge Grant. Go. Dagenham and Reveridge 2. Pompey. Uh, Pompey. Wimbledon 4. Down to the channel. Can he get it back across? He can. Taylor's in there. And we lead 1-0. The narrow formation today. We tried it out because Leighton Orient have gone narrow and we've scored after just 51 seconds. Lyle Taylor. Frank and whips it. Back post and Osborne's put it in. It's 2-0 to Wimbledon. The narrow tactic has cancelled out Leighton Orient this time and we are two goals to the good. We just need to hang on, really. We're two goals to the good. That's the position we want. Toure slips it through and Shenton's running onto it. He needs support, though. Going all the way deep. Back post. Taylor 3-0. Wimbledon 3, Leighton Orient 0, and we are finishing this season with a plum, and it is brilliant. Goes all the way across the pitch, and Clark will get this. We've got to be careful. Mark your men, guys. Those low crosses are lethal. Oh, he's got a cross. Os went over Osborne's head, and Simpson was able to get in there and make it 3-1. There we go, guys. Wimbledon 3, Leighton Orient 1, and we are in a really strong position. And Loveridge is across, and that could be the goal that sends us into League One. James Loveridge, and at this rate, it would actually send us up as champions in this game. Person, it's oof, nearly across the line. Could still be. Uh, well, I don't know what the hell's happened there, but it's been put in by Akin Fenwell. We are now going to win this game, and it looks like we'll be champions as well, thanks to a late equaliser at Oxford. There we go, guys. Stevenage nil, Wimbledon 2. We are champions. I Part of me actually wanted Oxford to win that game against Carlisle, just so that we'd actually have something to play for in the final live come of the season. Right, guys, we're back. And as you can see, we are champions of League 2. Um, like I said in the uh, highlights, I genuinely was really hoping that Carlisle would grab a late equaliser. Uh, a late, not a late winner. Uh, sorry, that Oxford would grab a late winner against Carlisle, just so that there was something to play for in this game. We've just really stepped it up. And I think the difference was, yeah, okay, the win against Dagenham and Redbridge, they played right into our hands with that tactic. But the Leighton Orient game was the key one. Uh, you know, at home against Leighton Orient, they went with the narrow system. And I thought, do we go with the 4-4-2 that I'm used to? Or do we try out the old one that I made sort of based around those narrow tactics? I went for the narrow and we got the win. And that was the probably the best decision I've made all year, frankly. And that means we are champions of League One. Now, the slight issue is that we've got a transfer budget of next year of £9,000. That's going to be fun to work with, isn't it? Um, I think there's a little bit of wage budget, but it's not a lot uh, of an improvement. So we are really struggling for that one. So we're going to have to do some wheeling and dealing in the summer. And that brings me on to my next point. But first, a question of the day. Today's question is this. What is the most goals you've seen scored by a player in a single match? I presume you mean on FM. For me, it was Marcelo Di Placido who grabbed himself six. I can't remember who it was against. If anyone can remember, that would be amazing. Uh, for Roma last year. That's the most I've seen um, on FM since I've been playing it, basically. So let me know what your most player is. And in a competitive game, obviously. This was in a league match, I think, that uh, Di Placido did this. So yeah, and if you've got any ideas for a question of the day, of course, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Take a quick gander at the squad before I show you some of the players I've got in mind uh, that we want to get. They're all young players. They're all regens. They're all players that were coming through at the same sort of times as the other ones I was looking at. But these ones I had more time to scout or wanted to scout a bit more. Uh, so top goal scorer at the moment is Lyle Taylor with 18. He's actually stepped it up this month and been superb. I can't fault him. Assists, Franken with 11. And Jake Reeves with, sorry, Franken with 12 and Jake Reeves with 11 is always nice. Player of the match awards, it's still seven for him. And of course, uh, 131 key passes for George Fra um, Franken. Last five games though, I mean, look at that, Jake Reeves, an 8.2. He's just been uh, astonishingly good over the last few matches. Average rating over the whole season, he's been our best player. But Loveridge has done a great job as well in that role. Now, let's take a quick gander at some transfers. I meant to say scouting, not transfers. Now, this admittedly, there's only five players here, but that's because I really did limit things. I was, I had a bigger list and I've just been chopping it down and chopping it down as the reports came in and the stars sort of changed. Now, Obviously, none of them are ready for first-team football yet. That much I can tell. But they look like really solid players, uh, potential-wise. Now, usually I set the bar at 
three stars, but I'm just... Mm. Sharples was an interesting one for me. I, I was a little bit unsure on Inveski, but he is 15, which is why I kind of gave it that little bit extra. Let's take a little look at him, actually. So he plays at the moment for Radcliffe Borough. So he's English, he's 15 years old, and it's surprised to see a player of this sort of reasonable quality coming through at a team like Radcliffe. I don't know what league they actually play in, and we can't really find out from there. Um, but, hey, I I'm not going to knock it. I might try and go after this guy. I think we could pick him up pretty damn cheap. Frankly, I think we could probably get him for about £1,000, so it's worth a crack. Um, next up is Alistair, Alistair Rattray, who plays for TNS, or Total Network Solutions. Uh, he is actually English, and this is what I'm liking. That sort of thing is what I like to see. He's 98% scout. There's a little couple of things that they're still clearing up. I thought I'd show you anyway, because I'm interested to say the least, in this lad. Um, he's got big hair, and that's always nice. He's a sort of striker, but he can play an attacking midfield role as a shadow striker, as well as a playmaker in the middle, potentially. So he's got decent stats in for a lot of positions, and I'm, in, I'm enjoying watching that uh, develop. Some of the match reports are looking very good for him. Uh, next up is John McKeever, who is actually on loan uh, at H and W Welders from uh, Cliftonville. But again, I really would be interested in bringing in a good right back because Barry Fuller isn't going to be able to play there forever. And I think this is the sort of player that I would like to have. Uh, he's a not bad wing back either. I'll just show you what he's like on a wing back on support. Um, okay, so some of these stats could do with going up a little bit, but he's also got great determination, decent stamina as well. So we'll look to get him as well. Now, this, next comes up the two Bishop Stortford players. I actually found Wayne Bentley first. And I was looking through some of the other players that Stortford had, and this guy stood out to me, not because I thought he would be any good, but purely because of his name. But first, let's have a look at Wayne Bentley. Says not a worthwhile signing, but I don't know. Something about him makes me think that perhaps he will be. He's, you know, he's not bad potential-wise. Okay, some of his stats aren't fantastic, but I might bring him in. If we can get him for 500 quid, I'll bring him in, since we've got to be working on a budget here. And yeah, Salvatore Di, Giro Di Girolamo. Um, terrible hair again. He's got that same rash as a lot of the other players, but... I saw him and I thought, why is an Italian playing for Bishop Stortford? When I looked, got a scout report on him anyway out of pure curiosity, and it turns out he's actually not bad. So I'm actually looking at getting him in as well, potentially. And obviously there'll be more, but these are the ones I've got so far. There's still a few others that I'm uh, sort of interested in, um, but I'm not sort of ideally sure yet. I want to wait until the summer to start looking at some older players potentially, but it just depends on how much we've got in terms of money. If we've got no money, it's going to have to be these sorts of players because the fact is, after a while, they are going to fill an incredible team if we can get some of these guys in. They'll be great for this level and maybe even for League One at some point, but it is hard to tell and that's what I'm looking for. I like to do the youngsters stuff because it just builds you a better team over time and that's why I like to do it. So, without further ado, let's get into our final game of the season against Newport County. They're playing a 4-4-2. What more do you want, frankly, guys? What more do you want? Uh, we're going to go with mm, actually is there anyone else i really want to try out that hasn't really had much of a chance this year i don't think there is to be honest um everyone's sort of played to some extent if i'm honest so i don't think there's anyone that really needs a start that hasn't got much of one uh nightingale and Teixeira, fuller kinsella toure shenton reeves frankham loveridge and taylor is barcham not available no sorry he's better we're bringing barcham in um and that's what we're going to go with for today. Uh, is William Nightingale not fit? Okay, it doesn't matter. We'll get this going. And apologies if this episode is taking a little bit longer. It's just because of uh, me having to show you that stuff. But I really did want to show you that stuff. I'm still not entirely sure on whether I'll show you transfer negotiations over the summer. Because I was really looking at it. I didn't really think what it would add. Because the fact is, you know that I'll probably be able to pick up at least two or three of those guys. And they're not going to want much in wages. They'll probably all go for about 100 and 90 pound a week that's what i've been signing these sort of players on and i don't really know what that would add other than make the episode stupidly long for no reason i'd rather sort of take you through stuff pre-season do a squad report and stuff and look forward to the first game and actually involve content rather than doing that so i think that's what i'm probably going to do because i just don't think i'm very good at that sort of stuff and you know i'm no transfer specialist that's for sure i'm quite decent at finding these young regens but it's just a question of more knowing where to look there's loads of different methods i like to do the method i use um, i'm going to make a video on it at some point but i can just tell you now just set your hot uh, set your scouts to look for hot prospects three star potential as a kind of maximum uh, sorry not maximum minimum taylor's through and he's made it one nil um set your scouts to look for hot prospects or i think it's hot prospects that's what i use anyway um and then scout regions although in our case it isn't a need of scouting region we can just scout her entire scouting range which is just scotland england wales northern ireland and ireland um so it, it doesn't really make much difference but once we've got a slightly higher scouting range i'll switch that up and have several different scouts on the go at the uh, all the time um scouting different regions uh, so i'll set one for scandinavia i'll have one for eastern europe i'll have one for central europe and so on and so forth um that's what i do and then when they come in when the scout reports come in i'll take a little initial look at them and don't just be fooled by the stars sometimes the stars aren't all mighty and all seeing um you know it's not il Mendy confirmed they are definitely there for help but you know you can get a lot more out of it without just looking at the stars take a little look at some of them have a look at some of their stats if you can see them take a look at some of the pros and cons that your scouts would have outlined for you and if they look like a worthwhile prospect even if the scout may not agree take a little look scout them further send out a scout for three matches um 
then build up a big shortlist of say sort of 15 20 players that you're looking for in the same kind of bracket and this is how i get the young regions this won't work potentially as well for sort of more established players but that's just not how i play the game so it's irrelevant to me bartram's in and bartram has scored as well and it's 2-0 and we've been dominant today and we're going to win the title in style um so then once you've got that shortlist scout them fully get 100 percent scouted or as close to it as you possibly can usually i send a scout out for a month sometimes even two if uh, they're not going to be playing as much because obviously they do have to be playing games uh, for under 21 games so over the summer it can be a little bit more difficult although generally they do get game time after that have a little look and say right who fits these positions where are we going to want to play them in the future are there any really glaring cons like are they stupidly injury prone and such like that then after a while you should have a list of players that you can then go and start bidding on now put them in a priority list and go after them in that order um in theory you should be able to land a reasonable amount of them depending on the level of your club if you're a big club then you should in theory be able to land all of them if not um ignore the filters on your scouts about um realistic transfers it doesn't matter whether it's realistic or not uh, that's really poor from us there doesn't matter whether it's realistic or not just go and you know the reason that they're not realistic it means that they want more money basically most of the time i if i was to filter those same players by uh, realistic transfers you'd probably lose a couple of them probably um the one that's on loan probably will get lost off that list but the point is that if you offer them a little bit more money and they'll come anyway you could do this with brazilian wonder kids sometimes but obviously not when you're wimbledon but my point is i was signing brazilian wonder kids from like Santos and that when I was Red Star Belgrade and not doing that well either you just have to offer them a bit more money so if you've got it use it leverage it onto these players get them on long contracts with options and Taylor has nearly scored another one and then you can develop them yeah okay after a while they're going to want a new deal but the point is that you'll either you're going to make money on them let's, play, let's put it that way there's no chance that you will not make money on those players uh, so I just like to play the money ball the percentages so you know if we sign 10 players this summer which we're not going to but we'll probably sign about seven or eight maybe of these sort of youngsters Five of them probably won't get anywhere near the first team and maybe never will. But they will move on for more money than we've sold them for, uh, than we bought them for because of our reputation, which will be higher. So their values will instantly improve, which means we can make money on every single transfer we've done. And this will work at a higher level too when we're signing better players. We've just conceded a goal from a corner. Shocker. Apologies that I'm talking over the top. I just thought you guys might want to know this sort of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, three or four of them each year will probably come through to be first team players, which means either they'll play for us and be part of the history of this team, or we'll sell them on much later on for a huge profit, hopefully, if they're as good as their potential would suggest they are. That's essentially the way I do my scouting. And hopefully, you know, if you're not particularly good at scouting, maybe that's taught you a thing or two. I don't know. That's the one area of the game that I think that I'm potentially okay at, uh, that I would consider myself to be, all right, above average, perhaps. Um, everything else, tactically, I'm pretty inept most of the time, although I feel like I've stumbled onto something pretty decent with this one so yeah that, that's basically what i do um in case anyone was wondering now you know <laughs> and you might notice that i've been wearing the same t-shirt for about the last five episodes the reason for that i'm gonna make three subs here just to freshen things up um the reason for that is because i've literally recorded like five six episodes today i'm bombing them all out as quickly as i can because i've got some time today and it just felt like the right thing to do to get them done as quickly as possible but still there's still hopefully a lot of uh entertainment value in these episodes and i uh, Plus, we've got a double upload weekend. Hopefully, there was a double upload weekend this weekend. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that as well. So, unless this is part of it, in which case, I hope you are enjoying it. Um, this game started off a lot more emphatically than it is suggested with the actual final score. 2-1 isn't fantastic, but it's a win. And I think that might be four, four wins in a row, maybe even five. I'm not sure. We've finished off the season with incredible form. Uh, Reevesy, go on, have a pop. Shenton? Oh, I was hoping Oliver Shenton would get a goal for us in his probably his last game. We might get him back on loan next year as well. I'm tempted to get both of them back on loan, unless Stoke have got anything awesome for us as well. I think we can address a lot of things in that one, frankly. Um, so there we go, guys. We're top of the league. We have won League 2 in our first season. That was something I did not legislate for. My plan was to sort of get in around here, maybe sneak a playoff spot if we could. Uh, and based on the start we had, I genuinely thought there was no chance of that. But we seem to have found a tactic, or even a pair of tactics, frankly, to cover all the bases, that work brilliantly. And that is Orinoco, and I think it's Wombling Free are our two tactics. Now... I know some of you probably want to try these tactics, and obviously you're welcome to try that, but you won't be able to see the player instructions. I'm not going to go through it now. But what I will do is, if we're successful with this tactic next season, we look solid and it continues to flourish, then I will put them both up on my website for download. I don't normally like to do that until I'm certain that the tactic is working and that it is not just a fluke. But you can see when we started using this tactic. Look at the start we pl I hate it when it does this. Like, why would it not let us... Pain in the ass. Uh, but there we go. So in the next episode, guys, we're going to do transfer window stuff, which of course means uh, lots of friendlies and stuff. I'll be testing out potentially that third tactic over the summer in some friendlies just to see if I can get a third one that will work against the other stuff that our tactics cannot cover. Now, it's going to be tough for us in the summer. We're going to try and bring some of these guys in, keep hold of the players we've got, bring some loanees in perhaps just to sort of uh, 
fill in the gaps until such time as these guys can become better and fill in the gaps themselves. And yeah, um, don't expect loads of big money transfers anytime soon, but you know I love a bit of that later on. But for now, we're going to have to drive a hard bargain and do what we can on a shoestring budget because the club is in trouble financially and I cannot afford to be the uh, the bearer of bad news with that. I don't want to be the... Uh, I don't want them to shoot the messenger, so to speak. So guys, if you like what you've seen and you've enjoyed this first season at Wimbledon, where we've actually won the bloody league, I don't know where that's come from, but there we go, then please do drop a like on this video. If we could get this one to 500 likes, that would be fantastic, just because we've won the bloody league. And we are where we are, frankly. And I really hope you guys are still enjoying this series and looking forward to next season. And if you haven't already and you've got to this stage, uh, please do uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And hopefully going forward, things are going to get even more entertaining. And hopefully we can get a bit more prolific, uh, prolific striker next year. Uh, maybe Loveridge could do that for us. Or maybe Lyle Taylor will just start to realise some of that potential. He's got 18 goals, which isn't too bad. So, I will join you guys in the next episode for transfer goodies and our first game of the league season. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.